Hey everyone, you might recognize me and Eric here from the Nintendo Prime Podcast. I just want to let you know before you get into this segment that this merchandise you see on our shirts and on our cups and on anything else you ever see with Nintendo Prime brandy on it, you can get in the description below. You can also get the full audio podcast not segmented in the description below. And if you would like early access to our podcast, please go over to patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime. For $5 a month, you gain early access to the full audio podcast. And well, Mr. Eric, what do you get for $20 a month? Ooh, you get to join us on a podcast. That is right. So, if you would like to ever be on the Nintendo Pride Podcast, get your voice in front of thousands of other Nintendo fans out there. You know what to do. Hit up that $20 tier on Patreon. Anyways, folks, on to the episode. <laughs> Um, this, this next topic, though. Oh, boy. Uh, I think this is the first time ever our topic is literally Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Crazy yeah. that this game, and this might have something to do with the topic itself, that this game is a widely hyped, or a widely uh, anticipated game by people who like JRPGs. Um, is a, mm-hmm. is a franchise that only even came to the United States because of a fan movement in Operation Rainfall, because Nintendo yeah. just wasn't going to do it. That's Apparently right, Reggie represent. told them, uh, uh, from, from what I remember in interviews, Reggie Fizeme told Nintendo of Japan <laughs> that Xenoblade would sell in the United States, and they just brushed them off for like a year. Yeah, um, it was insane. And then the they kind of realized, hey, we don't have any games coming, English. so why don't we port these games we already have? <laughs> yeah. Plus the high fan demand. It might be the one time in history that fan demand, uh, petition-wise and blah, 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 actually made a difference. Yeah. But... Xenoblade Chronicles 2. The, 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 big, the big overarching question is obviously, is it getting enough marketing? Um, and we'll get into some subtopics on, like, you know, will be marketed different, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this topic, actually, I, I'm, I have to give a huge credit. This, I saw a thread about this on ResetEra.com uh, by a, a user named, named Shunt, and they, and they made a bunch of good points. So we're going to go ahead here and uh, read off. Uh, their initial post that made me want to talk about this. Uh, and Eric's back. So Eric, why don't you go ahead and start off reading the first few paragraphs for me? <sighs> yeah, as you're clearing your throat. It's if you hell. can. Uh, if I can, yeah, right? Exactly. <laughs> you can grab another, like, another soda or something. I want like a water. water. water? Okay. Yeah, grab right. a bottle of Pepto-Bismol. Yeah, right. No, I don't know what. It's just, I got like a tickle in my throat. I don't know what it is. That, that happens. Sometimes. I can't, I can't, like, I, I'm trying really hard not to cough here right now. Yeah. So... Right. Let's see if you can get power through and then you have to yeah, be right. quiet for a little bit. Huh? Then you get to be quiet for a yeah, little right. bit. Yeah, right? Um, okay, so we'll start with the quote here. Uh, can we talk about how much an utter disappointment the presentation of this game has been? This is supposed to be Nintendo's hefty December game. Not expected to outsell Odyssey or anything crazy, but it's definitely being pushed as a significant entry into the Switch's lineup by Nintendo. So why does the masses not give a single damn about it? Nintendo seems hell-bent on repeatedly explaining the game's combat over and over as if it were some character action game and not a JRPG. We've seen Gamescom and Milan spend 45 minutes focusing on the combat and little else, even running through a town and purposely skipping interesting shops and NPCs. In summary, I feel like Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is a complete flop in the public's eye, it might outsell Xenoblade Chronicles X, but if it does, it will only be because it launched Holiday of a Popular System's first year. Nintendo slash Monolith have completely misread their marketing for this game, stumbling every time it's come for the game to be put in the spotlight. Okay, I'll take over again. <laughs> I feel like it might be getting cold or something, man. Yeah, I think so. Um... <clears throat> Sorry, right, it's that time of the year. Good effort. Good We're effort. Really cold. We just had yeah. like three inches Thank of you. snow the other day, and then it all melted. I... Welcome to Wisconsin. Um, mm-hmm. All right, so to finish off with this guy said, so how would you save this game's marketing? The drip feed from Monolith Twitter is cute, but amounts to nothing, uh, especially now that the entire here's a rare blade shtick has gotten tiresome and predictable. I'm almost certain that if Nintendo were to announce a Xenoblade Direct at this point, no one would bother to watch it. I guess if I were Nintendo, I'd do what they did with Splatoon to hype up arms, promise a reveal for a fan favorite game in a direct, like Splatoon 2, but have a majority of it be about Xenoblade 2, 
um, you know, like they did with they, they basically did this with arms. Um, mm-hmm. they, they promised like this big Splatoon two thing, and then most of it was about arms. Uh, and arms ended up selling like one point three something million, and it's probably still selling. Obviously, not a top seller, but uh, I don't know if it would fix the problem at this point. However, this close to release, and also the game is tracking abysmally. Um, ComGNet, the site that tracks Japanese pre-orders. And also, 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 speaking of Mario and Zelda again, I find it hilarious that Xenoblade is failing when Mario and Zelda have put out some of the best gaming trailers in video game history this very year. To see mm-hmm. what should be Monolith's first true big blockbuster, releasing on the first holiday of a system that is selling like hotcakes, flounder about like a fish out of water is pretty damn disappointing. I don't know whether to blame Nintendo or not if Monolith were the ones who threw together the E3 trailer and were the ones behind the Snorefest that was the September Direct. They may only have themselves to blame, although even then, it should be up to Nintendo to hype the game up. It's just really depressing. And I'm going to start this conversation a little bit by saying, the last time I remember seeing the game was the September Direct. Uh Um, Obviously, you know, they have had showings at other events, but those weren't U.S.-based events, so uh, a lot of us in the U.S. probably had no idea what was going on. Um, Yeah, I didn't even know. That September Direct... I remember being pumped when Xenoblade Chronicles 2 popped up because I've been waiting to hear more. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was really like, like the first two, I think two minutes or two and a half minutes were awesome. It was like a trailer. It was really epic. Everything was being built up. You got to the voice and you're like, okay, this is cool. And then the voice just kept going and mm-hmm. kept going and kept oh. going. And it went from what should have just been the two to three minute max to like this 10, 15 minute thing that went super in depth into the yeah. combat and it wasn't even an interested voice it was like an old tired you know beast and the thing is that probably <sighs> works within the game right it probably does but you're not, not listening to that voice talk for 15 minutes straight in the game i guarantee it yeah, yeah. so like it works in the small chunks you're going to be dealing with because that voice sounds like it's like your main traveling fake guy mm-hmm. uh and that's fine and that works within the context of the game and the voice. I the thing is, like people say, I don't like the. I mean, I actually think the voice for what it's supposed to represent is fine. The voice yeah. as a narrator for a fifteen-minute demo of the game, no, no. Um, a good voice for a character in the game versus a good voice to narrate the game are two completely different things. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember there was a point we had this conversation yeah. way back then that if they had just cut off the trailer at this, yep. that's a good look at yep. the game. There was. There was a spot where before that started into that, it almost seemed like two separate trailers that they just try to smash into one. Yeah. And mm. there was a definite split where that where that beast came in and then all of a sudden started going into gameplay that I I tuned out after like the first little bit because there was so much going on that I was like I'm not gonna even remember this. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's what I kept saying before. There's too much. Inf- there's an information overload here. And now, obviously, if you're a Xenoblade fan, and if, like I haven't played the first two games much, uh, so I didn't know a lot of these inner mechanics. Like maybe it didn't overwhelm you, but it should have because if you are a Xenoblade fan, you don't need to be told this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So it might have been came off as boring. And if you're new to Xenoblade. You don't want to hear all this stuff. These are mechanics you learn while playing the game. This would be yeah, akin... Usually not all at once, either. Yeah, right. this would have been akin to Nintendo showing you every possible thing you could do with the physics engine mm. in a 15-minute trailer, mm. um, which yeah. might, might sound awesome in hindsight, but then you realize there's nothing to discover in the game uh, physics-wise because you've seen it all. Mm. Um, and I'm not saying that's happened. Like, Xenoblade is a, a very deep game, so there's probably tons of stuff we don't know. But right. Okay. It, when you're representing a game that's that large and that ambitious, as it seems like they're trying to make that game out right. to be, you can't overload the information. And people in RPGs, especially, they do care a lot about story. Mm-hmm. And you've told mm-hmm. us very little about mm-hmm. the story, which some people right. are going to love. They're going to absolutely love that. Very little about the story. Mm. All this focus on gameplay, very little about the story. But you have to tell some people about the story who are fans of the Xenoblade series that want to try to connect the dots and get hyped about what's happening in this game. Um, even in Breath of the Wild, even in Mario Odyssey, we knew a little bit about the story heading into the launch. I know nothing about the story of Xenoblade mm-hmm. Chronicles 2 at all. I know it takes place on giants instead of like one solid landmass. Um, I know these giants apparently have voices, and I know that there's a crap load of combat in some villages. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the first Xenoblade Chronicles took place on 
two giants. Yep. But like really, really, really giant giants. Yes. They were these go- ancient gods. Huge. Yeah. And it looks like they're doing that, but uh, you know, ten times as many, and each one is ten times as small. So M- more manageable. Sure. sure. Uh, like the dungeons in Breath of the Wild, now there are 120 little shrines. Yeah, yeah. It's here's the thing. I I think the marketing has been bad. Um, I like I yes. know this person brings up. Oh, they're releasing those little things on Twitter, which is cute. Nintendo does that with all their games now. Uh, yeah. Breath of the Wild, Super Mario Odyssey, Splatoon, Arms. They all were getting screenshots and stuff on Twitter. Um, I I think that's smart. I think that's something that that they should be doing for every game they have. Um, but that's not the main marketing. Those are people that are already buying your game mm-hmm. or pay attention mm-hmm. to that. Um, it's keeping the hype alive. Yeah. People that uh, you want to attract. You want to attract new consumers. Um, especially for a series like Xenoblade, which I, I almost wonder if this game doesn't sell well. If it is like, uh, oh, we might not make any more. Uh, be because tragic. the series has never been like a huge seller. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, it was the best seller out of all of the JRPGs they brought to Switch in the U.S. and on the Wii. You know, I think they had three of them: Pandora's Tower, Xenoblade, and uh, I always forget the third. One. Uh, the last story. The last story. The thing is, I like the last story the best out of the three, but Xenoblade mm. sold the best, so Xenoblade stuck, and that's what Nintendo stuck with, and it was with a comp- uh, a, a studio they own now. Um, so fine. Uh, it didn't bother me that they kept Xenoblade going. In fact, I was kind of happy because. Outside of Final Fantasy, there really hasn't been a lot of major AAA uh, JRPGs anymore. You know, right. Out of all the genres that people talk about, die, like, oh, 3D platforming games have gone away. They haven't really gone away, but J- but JRPGs? Especially can't. on a Nintendo platform. Oh, on a Nintendo platform, they like, don't exist. <laughs> um, at all. Yep. Like, a- at least we could say, oh, on Wii, we got Call of Duty and stuff. Like, er, no. Crystal Chronicles. The 3DS yeah. is the closest thing. <laughs> We've yeah, had, 3DS. 3DS did have some some nice ones, but yeah. con, like home console wise, feels mm. like it's been a while. And I know someone's going to mention some obscure game that I don't know about. Tokyo um, Mirage Sessions. Yeah, something like that, which is fine. About it. Crossover game, you know, kind of yeah. like a, a Hyrule Warriors or, or a Fire Emblem Warriors in a sense. Uh, where how much credit do I give to it being a, a, a JRPG versus how much credit do I give? It's to It's pretty fantasy? solidly a JRPG. It, it is. It is. But it's also like we only have it because it's crossover, right? Th- yeah, that is the reason why we have it. But um, I appreciate it because I do stylistically, awesome. it was basically Persona, yeah. which is cool. It, it is awesome. It It is one of the best games released on Wii U that literally no one played. <laughs> yeah. It, its sales were so bad for how great that game was. Uh, All the yeah, reviews really of that game. game, like it's like a mid-80s review game, but nobody bought it. But, no, it doesn't yeah. help that the Wii U is just not a very good platform right. in terms of sales, but... You know, uh, plenty of Ooh. games sold multiple millions of copies on Wii U, and that game felt like, okay, it's niche, so it's not going to sell multiple millions. It should have sold a million, but it didn't even come close. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, that's one game I actually hope they bring, they poured over to Switch. I was just going to say, there's going to be a deluxe version of that. Yeah, I, the, that any game that didn't get a fair shot on Wii U, I think, should come over. Even some that did. Like, I think Bayonetta, Bayonetta 2. 2. Bayonetta 2, yeah. I, think, I think, had a very <laughs> fair shot on, on Wii U. I think it's going to sell amazing if they buy that over on Switch. Because uh, mm-hmm. Nintendo controls all the rights for that game. So all they got to say is, hey, let's do it. And then just get someone mm-hmm. to port it. Um, but Xenoblade Chronicles 2. I'm probably going to get the game. It'll be my first Xenoblade game that I've owned. Now, I have played X. I have played the first one. There were other people's copies. Um, so I didn't, you know, for JRPGs. I used to play tons of JRPGs, like all mm-hmm. the JRPGs. I used to play them all. Hundreds and hundreds of hours sunk into all these different games. Um, Final Fantasy obviously being the one franchise that I, I sunk probably the most hours into until it went over to Sony. Um, and that's just because I was a Nintendo boy growing up, so I didn't own uh, PlayStation platforms usually until later in their life when I just bought a used one for really, really cheap. Mm-hmm. Um, and by then, I probably wasn't going to get into the Final Fantasy games because I bought it for, you know, maybe it was for other games that, that I wanted to play that Nintendo no longer got, like a Madden or something. You know, mm-hmm. quick, quick experiences. Mm-hmm. Um, rather than ones I'm going to sink hundreds of hours in because, heck, I have all these games on Nintendo I'm still sinking hundreds of hours in. Um, so, with Xenoblade Chronicles 2, 
Uh, one reason I'm giving it a shot is obviously uh, I love. I know I love JRPGs, and I mm-hmm. guess o- over the course of my life as an adult, I- it's been hard for me to find an excuse to justify sinking hundreds of hours into a game. Breath of the Wild, I always had an yeah. excuse because I worked at Zelda Informer when it came out. <laughs> right. Um. So I needed an in-depth knowledge of the game to properly cover it and talk about it and create content around it. Whereas uh, I've never had a reason with Xenoblade 2, so that was like... I know some of you guys will say, oh, well, you should just play it because you need a work-related reason. You're right. But reality is I'm a father of three, and I'm... Mm-hmm. I I have played a greater variety of games on Switch already this year than I've probably played any other year in the past 10 years because now I get to cover all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And even if I'm not making reviews or previews, I get to show off these games while I'm talking about news. Um, mm-hmm. And it's made me appreciate gaming even more, if I'm being honest, because it yeah. has been hard. And Switch is obviously the perfect platform. For, for someone like me who's really, really busy, um, being able to take it with me and play it at home, like, it's just awesome. It's, it's everything I n- know I needed out of a console until I had it. <laughs> right. Um, thank you, Nintendo. Like I, People talked about the hybrid idea in the past. So I was like, eh, do I really want them to sacrifice power to make like like a Vita? Yeah. Uh, apparently, yes. Yes, I did. Yeah. Right. Um, yep. <laughs> but Xenoblade Chronicles 2 was always, or the Xenoblade Chronicles series has always been like, I, I can't justify what it's going to take to play this game. Um, I, and the thing is, I was still sinking a bunch of hours into like World of Warcraft, but I started that when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I have, I have, you know, this at this point, thirteen year investment into that game, um, and I don't even have my my subscription active. I don't even think it's active right now. Um, but when I do activate it, you know, it it feels like home because I I have a history. Uh, I don't have a history of Xenoblade, right? So. You know, even the even the old school Xeno series stuff out there. I, I didn't play those growing up. So I, I just don't have a yeah, history with it. Didn't play those. Uh so when I don't have the history, um I know for me to get invested, I'm going to have to when I buy the first the first game I buy, I'm gonna have to put probably at least two hundred hours in. Um and I'm probably gonna love every moment of it. And then I'm gonna be kicking myself in the butt for all the experiences I missed because of it. Um but now I work at Nintendo Prime, and yeah. I fully believe in bringing every genre of game to the platform. And I feel like we just got done saying uh, JRPGs have kind of gone away mm-hmm. um, on Nintendo platforms, especially. But even in general, like there's just not as many of them. Um, and I really want to see a resurgence of them on Nintendo's platforms. But how can I do that if I don't try out the key game? trying to drive JRPGs back for Nintendo. Um, and it could be a thing that like, if I love it and my coverage of it, and if other big YouTubers start covering it, it might encourage a company like, you know, Square Enix to bring over Final Fantasy. Right. Um, you know, the unquestioned king of JRPGs. So, in other games, obviously. Lots or, of other JRPGs. Uh, Atlas to bring over Atlas. Persona proper. Yeah, Persona and proper. Persona, Persona proper would be nice. Um mm-hmm. And there's, like I said, there's other JRPGs out there. So Nintendo doesn't get them. Get, get, like, full versions. So there's that. There's my hope that I enjoy the game so much that it makes me want to talk about it for years and years and years and years and years. But here's the problem. And here's the problem for someone like me. Um, and probably other people out there as well that maybe they used to like JRPGs or they wonder what JRPGs are like and they want to try something out, but they're not sure what game to do on Switch. And there's only going to be one option right now. They're marketing. For Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Has come. Like within a hair of making me not want to get the game. Mm -hmm. And it's not because I think the game looks terrible. It's because as a person who's not a fan of the series. Who doesn't know much about it. It. They're scaring me with the complexity. And they're not giving me the substance. Well and they're showing us really cool stuff. But making it boring in the way that they're showing us. Yes. It's kind of spoiling the fun of it. Yeah. Like Like, uh, a lot of this stuff, I think isn't, I don't even think it's that overly complex. Like I've gone back and rewatched the footage. I'm like, I don't think it's overly complex. I think it's that when you play the game, you're introduced to these mechanics in an intuitive way. 
Yep. That makes it stick. That's what good games do. Right. Um, I mean, yep. obviously, some people argue good games. You know, like Dark Souls throws you in, you can do everything right away. You just suck for a while. <laughs> um, and that's fine. That's just a different way of playing. But that's not what Xenoblade, from what I have heard, it does. Like, it introduces you slowly to these mechanics. Uh, like like most games do. Like Mario Odyssey introduces you slowly to mechanics. Um, you could do everything right away with a like, Cappy, but you don't need to. Mm-hmm. So the game will slowly introduce you to these new things you can do. Um, and that's what they're going to do with Xenoblade Chronicles 2. But in their previews, they're not slowly introducing anything. They're throwing, like, here's our entire combat system. What do you guys think? Isn't this awesome? You saw 45 minutes of it. Have a good day. Yeah, right. Here's this this dragging, boring, ancient voice talking to you for 12 minutes about how awesome this combat system is. Have a good day. Yeah. It's like, no. No, 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 no. I want story. Yeah, uh, I want to plug my ears and just look at it. <laughs> I, I, and, and this actually is why I, the primary reason, not just, I don't think the combat looks boring. How they're presenting it looks boring. Mm-hmm. But when you actually watch, like I've seen some uh, Game Explains uh, videos, they had they played a demo of it or whatever. Um, when you watch just their pure gameplay ones, it looks great. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh my God, this looks, this looks way better than the marketing they've done. Mm-hmm. Like, the game looks fantastic. Why don't they just show this? Yeah. <laughs> Um, right, like they're not skipping NPCs. They're talking to people. Like they're doing things that people actually do in R- in RPGs. Mm-hmm. You know, they're not just saying, "Oh, it's all about combat." No, uh, people care about the role playing. They care about the story. Heavily care about the story, the side quests, the world building, uh, the characters. Uh, like when people think yeah, about Final Fantasy VII, who do they think about? The characters. Mm-hmm. They think about the story, the moments. They don't think, oh man, think about that amazing combat. That's not what sticks with them. Right. No. It's the moments. Was the combat good? Sure, but that's not, the the combat should be good. That's not what sticks with you. And and I feel like that's what they're missing the boat with the marketing is that they're not showing, um, they don't have to show all the moments that are going to stick with you, but they're not even giving us teases of moments that will stick with you. Um, and, and, And teases of things that people play RPGs for. Uh, combat is a very, very, very important part of an RPG, of a JRPG especially, with how they approach combat. But that's not why people buy the game. People don't buy the game for the combat. The combat supports everything else mm-hmm. that people buy the game for, in my opinion. You guys out there might disagree with me, but that's the way I've always viewed RPGs. RPGs are about mm-hmm. the world, the story, the characters, and then everything else is built around that. <clears throat> That's why I loved the first Dragon Age Origins and Dragon Age Origins 2. I know it's a Western RPG, um, but those first two games uh, were heavily story, heavily character, and then the combat and everything was built around it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm sure they started with the base idea of the combat first. I mean, I don't, you know, game development, etc. But they re- they realized they needed good characters and good story to build around it. And then Dragon Age Inquisition kind of, but, yeah, we're just going to build like this kind of Assassin's Creed like system. And we're just going to not really give you memorable characters or memorable moments. And that's where I felt Inquisition really fell. Not the microtransactions, not the DLC. The characters and the story wasn't memorable. I, I literally, I remember some of the some of the gameplay moments a, a little bit, but it's not like, oh, I, it makes me want to go back and experience that. No, they miss those moments. And I'm afraid that Xenoblade Chronicles 2 just doesn't have those moments because they're not, they haven't mm. presented me any reason to think those moments exist. Mm. Um. Yeah, and, and that's where I, where I feel the marketing has failed. Well, and and um, you know, you said that you know the fighting doesn't necessarily sell the game, but it can definitely <clears throat> get people to not buy your game. Sure, because if because I mean, a perfect example is is some of those old Pirates of the Caribbean games. The combat system in it was just absolutely terrible <laughs> so yeah. if that gets out that sure. your combat system is terrible people are not going to buy it because and, of that. and there's the thing because of how they presented their combat system it didn't present well right now as i said when you if you go to the side and you actually watch people just play the game instead of having it presented to you mm-hmm. it looks great but mm-hmm. i know that because i i went out of my way for additional coverage right in which you shouldn't have had to no and, and, I, the the trailers and the messaging from the company should be very clear, right? And and so, you know, 
combat may not be your your primary reason of buy. It shouldn't be the primary reason of buying it. It can definitely be a primary reason of not buying it. Well, I'll give, so, you, I'll give you another example. Bot and Katos. Mm-hmm. By the way, that franchise needs to come back. Um, that was one of the final uh, kind of sort of JRPGs that I sunk into. Mm-hmm. Card combat system. Yeah, I'm sure some of you guys have seen other other RPGs that have card. There's not. Uh, I don't think there's as many of them today. But there's still a few that linger around the card combat. You build decks and blah, blah, blah. Um, I thought the deck the deck thing, the combat, was an interesting idea. But that's not why I bought the game. That's part of the reason I kept playing the game. Because I enjoyed the combat very, very much. But it was the characters, the story, and the world. The, like, every preview for it, yeah, you saw a little bit of the combat. I'm like, okay, that looks different. Mm-hmm. Um it's turn based, but it's based on card abilities. And I'm like, okay, I can get behind that. Oh, and the characters look great, and the story looks good. And like, it was presented in a way that was appealing. Um, and I feel like that's what they're missing here. And so, we're you know a little over a month away, you know, three weeks or so away from launch of this game at the time this podcast goes up. Um, and they're running out of time to push this game. And part of me thinks they're going to be silent because. They have all these third-party games coming out. They don't want to overshadow. Mm-hmm. In fact, you could argue the timing of the release of Odyssey was so it wouldn't overshadow those games. Because uh, you be like, oh, Doom and Skyrim and all these games, L.A. Noire are coming out, but eh, no one really cares until the week after when Odyssey hits. Um, so I think Nintendo cleared the path mm-hmm. for the third-party games. Which, again, begs the question, who's, obviously, whose fault is it for the bad marketing? And... What what if there what is there is there anything they can do from this point forward to bring new people to Xenoblade Chronicles two? Is there any way they could salvage this? Because right now my interest I'm forcing myself to be interested mm-hmm. personally. Yeah, and I'm interested based on based on my experience. With the other entry. Mm-hmm. I mean, five J. Do you see? I mean, you're obviously you have more experience with Xenoblade than either of us here. <laughs> yeah, I have um, one. So. <laughs> So, you know, you got someone with none, someone who's just, you know, dipped his toes in um, and has been afraid to dive all the way in because of the time sink. And then you have you who's played a ton. Uh, is there anything you think they could do to interest people that aren't you? Uh, I They definitely need to stop focusing on just mechanics, mechanics. Like you said, if it is about the story, we need to start getting what's more like a movie trailer about the game mm-hmm. and less like oh look at how you have these arts and if you equip them to these slots and then we you need use a story them trailer. This. yeah we need a story trailer we need uh, a trailer that just shows off the beauty of the game mm-hmm. uh yes. how fun it might be to traverse these different giants you know they showed um, a, a beauty sc- like i i haven't reported on any of this but like mm-hmm. the screenshots they keep releasing on twitter like some of them look yeah. gorgeous, and I'm like, "Where's this?" Yeah, right. In your yeah, presentation, that's great. Let's have a real like commercial on TV with that. Like, stuff. where is you? I, what I want to see: multiple villages. Grab one of those villages and explore it for me, please, and show it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I know mm-hmm. what to expect in this game from the villages. Mm-hmm. All I see now is you running from point A to point B and ignoring everything going on. Does that mean there's nothing to do? Yeah, right. Does that mean right. those NPCs are just like dead characters, like they were in Twilight Princess, mm-hmm. where they, they, a bunch of background fodder that don't matter? Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and that's not the way RPGs usually work, right? There might be some characters that obviously don't matter, are just there to populate the world, but usually you can still interact with all of them. But can mm-hmm. you do that in this game? I don't know. Um, have you guys seen any actual commercials for for the game? No. Internet, TV, I, anywhere. I, I, uh, I want to say there was <laughs> one on YouTube, but it wasn't recent. So it mm. might not have been. Right. Uh, yeah. Maybe, like you said, maybe they're waiting for the Odyssey thing. Okay, let's give it a week, maybe two weeks. And then two or three weeks before the game comes out, we're going to hit, you know, commercials hard. Maybe. But I don't know. It seems kind of sketchy. It's I, I, a really think, short period of time. The thing, to try like, and spread obviously, the word. Mario and Zelda are going to have the biggest marketing budgets. Yep. Um, but Splatoon 2 had a huge marketing budget. They marketed ARMS, I think, very, very well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. and you know, arms, I, I think is pretty much on par for what people would expect as, you know, play games. So, <laughs> um, you know, th- really everything that Nintendo's released this year, 
Um, they even marketed snipper clips really, really well. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> it, it's like when you're able, uh, maybe the game that got the least amount of marketing that I love the most is Golf Story. Um, because that basically that's had not no their marketing. game, though. Like, it's a great game, but like, it, yeah. yeah, there was almost no marketing. Um, it was like, yeah, we announced it way, way early in the year, and then we didn't really say anything until the week it was coming out. But that's not Nintendo's game. Yeah, that's not Nintendo. It's an exclusive, but but yeah, Nintendo doesn't control the marketing behind I, it. I don't even know that it is exclusive. I thought there was a PC port coming. There might be now. I don't know. Might be console exclusive then. Beats me. Yeah, um, it was touted as an exclusive at launch, but sure. Nintendo likes to... It could be to a timed exclusive, Nintendo a, a likes term to tout, that people throw around now. Likes to toot their horn. <laughs> well, because Nintendo specifically called it a Nindy game, so... But Dude, they made are, several mistakes about yeah. many Nindies in, yes, in those I know they have. highlights. I, I'm yeah. aware. So. I'm, I'm very aware. Can't always believe the horror. They, they want you to believe it's this, but... Yeah. Um, <laughs> they just didn't do the research. But, man, I mean, a story trailer needs to happen. Yes, uh, one thing that completely. would show that Nintendo is dedicated to this game, I don't think they're going to do it, but a Xenoblade bundle... Um. Because one, that's going to at least make people who really like the Xenoblade series want to get a themed Switch. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you look at the the, the Skyrim, oh, oh the cow, skin? that looks amazing. The skin? Yeah. Yeah. The skin you get with pre-orders? Yeah. Um, there's that. And also, uh, I know they've only done like the themed Joy-Cons from Nintendo's games, but like yeah. Monster Hunter Double Cross in Japan had a themed dock. Yeah. Mm, oh yeah. I it's like it's why? Why is a third party company doing that? Nintendo's not. It's such yeah, a it's brilliant weird. idea. Why? Yeah. Why Nintendo? Well, no, and I know we've talked about with like Odyssey. They could have did a red dock with eyes. I mean, it it or something. set up something yeah. so well yeah. for that. Yeah. yeah, something. I mean, yeah, we're on the Joy-Con red red. Is not, I mean, the Joy-Con colors are fine. Yeah, I think they can release those separately though. I don't think they need to have those bundled in with. Like, imagine you're trying to collect all the Joy-Con colors. You have to keep buying three hundred dollar systems over and over again to get all the colors. Oh yeah. Um, mm-hmm. and again, that's not saying they're not going to eventually release them, or you can't customize Joy-Con. Of course, but the idea is you n- to not need to customize. You want the mm-hmm. OG. Um, but whatever. I mean, you know, it, I, I could complain about that, but then you also have like the zillions of versions of the 3DS. Um, yeah. custom- but see, those are full custom skinned mm-hmm. system. Xenoblade is getting a cool bundle, but it's not a bundle of yeah. like uh, switch product stuff. It's just like, Hey, it comes in a metal case. First yeah. switch game to come with a metal case. Cool. Soundtrack. Yeah, art, it's that like one of those stuff. limited edition things. Yeah. Looks cool. Um, and, and that's fine. I, I, you know, limited quantities. Yeah. I mean, Odyssey didn't even get anything like that. So, uh, but the thing is, it's like none of that's a marketing ploy. No. Um, that's more of a fan service play. Yep. Um, and fan service is great. They absolutely should be fan servicing because they want everyone who's ever played a Xenoblade game to buy this game. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's fine to fan service. They absolutely should. But maybe that, and maybe that's the problem with the marketing is that they just don't care to expand the reach of the game. Because maybe mm, not. I think they tried that with X. Their goal with X is to get Western gamers in. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, I mean, it was it, a bad it didn't system work, to try that on. It, <laughs> did it not work because the game was bad or did it not work because the Wii U was bad? Um, I'm thinking it's the latter. Yeah, it, it could be a combination of both. Like, I don't think X was bad, by the way. But like, just a combination no. of maybe the marketing for it wasn't... I mean, I, was the marketing better for X than, than this game? Than the first Xenoblade, probably, Well, yes, there was like but, no marketing for the first yeah, Xenoblade. Exactly. The marketing was all fans for the first yes. Xenoblade. Word of mouth. Yeah, word of mouth. Which word of mouth marketing is great. Oh, I yeah. Mean, Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of developers will tell you like the best marketing they can get is fans wanting to market their game for free because that means they felt like they did something right oh for sure um and i feel like that's what happened with games like uh steam world dig 2 uh stardew mm-hmm. valley golf story a lot of actually, indie games are a lot of when i was off. playing um mighty gunvolt um oh. burst there you go. You know, everybody heard of the game. Yeah. But once they saw it in action, they're like, oh, this is like legit a Mega Man 8 bit style well, game. Like that, that tiny metal game coming up during the stream when oh, I have to go buy it. Yeah. It's cool. Well, so there's a tiny metal game coming up that's like, oh, yeah, that's uh, yeah. made by the Sony Music Company. Uh, people, Some people know that. And some people know that mm-hmm. it's uh, like Advance Wars. But like, until they see it, they're probably going to pass on it. Yeah. Um, because that's just the way it is with indie games. And what sucks is, I feel like that's what's happening with Xenoblade. Yeah, Xenoblade is not an indie game. Mm-hmm. It's a triple mm-hmm. A game, 
made by a major Nintendo studio. Mm-hmm. Not getting treated like it's a triple A game made by a Nintendo. Like, it's getting the airtime. What they're doing with that airtime is the problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like like in this comment, I didn't even know it had a 45 minute showing at Gamescom. That's a huge deal. Yeah. What? If they showed 45 minutes of Odyssey, people can't stop talking about it. Granted, yeah. I know Mario's more popular. I get it. But if a game shows really, really well during that 45 minutes, people are going to talk about it. People are going to take notice. Right, it'd be a Kotaku article. Whoa, look at Xenoblade Chronicles 2. I mean, look at what... Uh, uh, there was that new game announced at uh, the that PlayStation event in Paris. Um, oh. I, I, can't, I can't remember where. It, it's like in, in, in feudal Japan or China or something. Um, oh, yeah. Really, really interesting um, looking game. Um, it's, made by, uh, it's made by a studio that's actually really good. They make really good games. Insomniac? No, it's not Insomniac. It's it's a two name studio. Like it's got two two names to it. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah I can't believe uh, I'm drawing a blank. Well, I mean, I can because I'm a Nintendo channel. But I actually watched uh, the, this after the fact because I, I again I'm curious in what's going on in the rest of the industry. And I saw that trailer and I'm like, okay, you have my attention, Sony. Like mm-hmm. this is the kind of perking up I did. When Splatoon was first showed off, like okay, you got me. I need to see more. I want. I'm highly interested and want to want to probably get this game. Um, like it's a, probably the first time Sony has showed off a game that I'm like, okay, that's gonna make me buy that that PlayStation Four finally. Mm-hmm. I've been, there's all these other games I want to play. That's the game being shown off, brand mm-hmm. new IP. It's not a, a, a an existing IP that I'm way behind on. Right. Looks like wow, um, mm-hmm. and. Xenoblade, it's three games in, and I feel like they haven't had that wow moment yet. They've just had that, hey, this was a, a niche game released in Japan. People want it on, on Wii because we don't have JRPGs. Um, and then, okay, it, it sold well enough to bring it back on Wii U, but then Wii U didn't sell well, so then the hype around it never really existed. Mm-hmm. Um, so probably blame to go both ways there. And now mm-hmm. we have Switch with tons and tons of hype. We have Nintendo giving it a prime release date. Granted, it's not the Black Friday release date, which I think would probably do a little better, uh, especially if they had a bundle system. Uh, if yeah. they had a bundle system on Black Friday, Switch is selling out on Black Friday. Um, so that means True. they would sell out of even the Xenoblade bundles, even if people don't want Xenoblade because they just want a Switch. Right. Um, and that's another thing. Like, if they had a Switch bundle, like if my marketing strategy would be like, nope, take that back. You're releasing like Thursday or or you're releasing on Thanksgiving or the day after Thanksgiving on Black Friday in the U.S. with a bu- with a bundle uh, that's going to force people to try out this game, mm-hmm. and that's going to help you get the word of mouth around this holiday on it. Yeah, either that or they're going to turn around and sell it. Well, they they usually <laughs> give a digital code. Uh, uh, yeah, you true. could try reselling it online, but a, a lot of people are just going to. It's it, it's a game that comes with the system. You're gonna you're gonna put it on, or you can right. even do what they they did with certain 3ds games when they bundled. They had them pre-installed, mm-hmm. so you could actually pre-install it. Where no, you can't get rid of it. You just have it forever. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you just have to sign up for an account. And as soon as you sign up for an account, bam, there's the game. Mm-hmm. The first game you see see on the on the menu. Um, so there's ways they could they could kind of force you to not be able to sell it. Right. And, and if you have it and it's your only game on Switch at the time, right? Or you know, one of three games you have, you're gonna try it. Right, very true. And if you love it, you're going to be like, wait a second, how come no one's talking about this game? Yeah, right. Um, that's one way. Uh, and the thing is, they did Splatoon bundle, they did a Mario Odyssey bundle. Why not have a brand new bundle land on Black Friday? Feel, feels like the right time for it. Um, especially for a game that, like, you could sell that bundle at, at, at the base price, like they did with the Odyssey bundle, and call it, well, no, they didn't. They, they charged 380 sorry. But they could sell this one with just the game included, and mm-hmm. just sell it at the base price because you already don't think it's going to sell super well just to build that word of mouth. And you can even limit the amount of these you have, right? Mm-hmm. Like say yeah. you don't want to lose a ton of money. So you only have, you know, 10,000 mm-hmm. uh, of, of these units out there in the wild. Um, that's fine. That's still 10,000 people that potentially are going to spread the word of mouth that would have never tried the game. Right. Um, yep. You hope because, I mean, you, Especially if it's nothing special about it, right? Like, if it's just a base, you know, but like you see in, in the frame here, you know, the base model of Switch with the black Joy-Cons and just has a little sticker on it. Like, literally, it could just be an aftermarket <laughs> sticker they slap on it that says, includes. Mm-hmm. So, you know, like, yeah, oh, for sure. Too. 
Um, so it's not something that the collectors are going to go out and grab, right? Like if it's a special edition with custom Joy Cons, all right, that's fan pandering. They're going to go right, buy it. Right. This would be oh, a way for to sure. force new people to try. Um, so that's one thing I do. And then story trailer. And beyond that, um, they need to find a way because now we're in the busy. We're the hard thing is we're in the busiest part of the year. Getting attention. So we can say yeah. it needs commercials. It needs commercials. It needs commercials. But now it's competing commercial-wise with everything, including mm-hmm. Odyssey now. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know what they can do because JRPGs are hard to show in commercials. Mm-hmm. They are. Yep. Um, but what they need to do is they need to find a catchphrase. Sure, Something yeah. to Something stick in their mind. Stick in people's minds like, uh, you know, I know this sounds corny, but epic worlds. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, hundreds of hours of story. Yeah, right. Build your own character. Blah, blah, blah. You know, it, it, this is really lame stuff, but that's what sticks in a general consumer's oh, mind yeah, to try sure. something out. Wait, I build my own character, fully customizable, um, immersive towns. Yeah. You know, with, with hundreds yeah. and hundreds of side quests or something. Like, something that just stands out that makes me like, wow, that blows my mind. And then yeah. you show off. I, I know this seems cheap, but this is how movies sell. You show off some of the best moments of the game in so, in those little clips. Some of the best yeah. looking, you know, yeah, you're right. You're, you're the, absolute I want best looking beauty town. shots. Show it off. Yep. Fantasy stuff. Yeah. Like you're like, there's mobile games that do this that obviously don't look like that. They're all CGI. Yeah. <laughs> but you could do something like that. Like you have to do a CGI trailer, whatever. Yeah. So something, something that just makes people be like, Oh my God. I got like, is there some epic fight in there? You know, maybe it's, it's only one fight, right? Maybe, maybe there's just this one fight that when you develop the game and you play tested it, like, man, that fight stood out. I'm going to remember it forever. And you just show off like a quick five second. Like, yeah. if you just swing in a sword at that bad boy. Yeah. Like, that's the kind of stuff that builds hype. Um, and we've talked about it. We've had Betty special about like, how would you, how would you announce the switch? Remember that? One? Yeah. Like, oh God, yeah. Like, like the Ugh. epic rising up out of the corner. Yeah. Like, like, but that's because that stuff's just hype. It, it's pure hype, and that's what they need to do right now. They have a very limited window left to build mm-hmm. hype for this game. Yeah, they've showed off all they need to show off for people who like Xenoblade. Now it's time to show off for the people who don't. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and the thing is, that requires a marketing budget. That requires Nintendo ponying up, being like, "Look, we yeah, we got you airtime at Gamescom, but we were going to be there anyways." So it probably didn't cost us anything, especially if we streamed it, right? Like Nintendo Treehouse stream. Okay, well, that did cost Nintendo pretty much right. anything. Um, they need to get airtime and commercials. Uh, they basically need just one great commercial, not multiple, just one great one that sticks. Get it out there um, in the middle of, of certain, either like Rick, a Rick and Morty episode. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> You know, just like something something that hits with that crowd that you want the game to go to. You yeah. know, Cartoon Network's obviously a great place to hit right. on. Like, like, can you imagine if they threw it as a commercial after during a South Park episode? Oh, yeah, right. Mm. In the middle of the night. I mean, I was going to say some NBA games. I don't know if people watch the NBA would be as interested. Right. Um, Disney Channel. Because it's not like the Super Bowl where you get people watching the Super Bowl who don't like football. Mm-hmm. Um but the NBA is not at that level, especially not in the regular season. So, but but there's like Disney Channel, like you said, like there's so many places they need to hit that commercial. So, right. like, I would almost uh, argue two commercials, just so the one isn't overplayed. Well, because you can get sick of commercials fairly quickly. Yeah, but we have such a small amount of time left. Yeah, so they, yeah. we don't have a lot of time, and there's going to be so many games fighting for that airtime. True. It's not like the commercial is going to get shown all the time. It might only be like two or three plugs of that commercial a day. Yeah. Um, and they might have even paid a million. You know, I, I don't know about a million, but, the, the, you know, a $100,000 per chunk, mm. you know, to get that commercial out there. And they're going to do yeah, it for I suppose Odyssey. it is only like, what, a week? Yeah. And, yeah. and like YouTube, obviously a great place. Uh, what's been awesome is for the very first time in my life on YouTube in the entirety of the eight years that Zelda and former channel existed now Nintendo Prime, we're getting Nintendo ads on our channel. I have seen yeah. Mario ads pop up three or four hey, times in the last hey. week. And I'm just like, wait a second. YouTube is obviously a platform you need to hit. And you need to hit the relevant places. Yeah. We're an extremely relevant place to hit with the Super Mario Odyssey ad. You can like, oh, we're all Nintendo fans. I guarantee you not every single person on my channel was interested in Odyssey. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, and it's not just me. Like, look at the bigger channels you could hit. 
Um, if Nintendo could target ads at certain channels or make partnerships, yep. like if there's a channel, uh, say there's a channel out there that traditionally covers a lot of Final Fantasy stuff, partner with them, mm-hmm. get commercials on their channel, get them to play the, get them the game early and tell them you have unlimited streaming rights to this game. And I know that sounds crazy, but if you can say, hey, look, you get five days early, no way in heck you're going to be able to sink five hundred dollars and see everything in those five days. Just get your million plus subscribers hyped. Mm-hmm. They're gonna be like, "How can we not get this game? I gotta go get a Switch today if I don't have one." Yeah. Um, there's just yeah. so many ways they could market, but again, some of it involves risk. Like the the giving a press copy to someone who's a big JRPG channel, um, obviously is risky, but it doesn't cost them anything really, right? It, it's the cost of the game for free marketing, right? Um, or and whatever else, you know, maybe to convince him to do it, they might have to get, pay him as well. I I don't know, right? Um. But or, or maybe Nintendo won't even pay them, but they'll say, hey, look, we're not going to claim your videos. We're going to whitelist you for this game. Yeah. That would be a big thing to do. Like, oh, so I'm the only one in the world that's going to be able to do this, and I'm whitelisted. Yeah, Interesting. For, well, for this game. Yeah. For, for that game. Or for that time period. Because mm. right. I can see Nintendo be like, ah, not forever, but, but for these five days. Or yeah, all the videos right. yeah. you make, or all the live streams you do during these five days, we won't touch. Um, or, or we'll manually go in and make sure that like it doesn't, you know. Uh, they'll put in the effort. Um, yeah. there's just, Nintendo's not going to do any of this. Right. And that's what sucks. <laughs> this is what they need yeah. to do. They need to be like, look, we're setting aside basically like $2 million in marketing for this game. And this is what we're doing to push it. Mm-hmm. But they're not going to. No. And I, I think Monolith is probably to blame for how the game's been presented. Cause I think ultimately they got to decide how they wanted their game shown. Mm-hmm. Um, but in terms of just pure marketing of commercials and all, like Nintendo gets a huge say. I mean, it's Nintendo's company, they're the ones investing in the money. Like I know everyone wants to, oh, they're a second party. Nintendo fully owns Monolith Soft. There is no mm-hmm. other owner of that company. Mm-hmm. It is all intents and purposes as much of a Nintendo studio as Nintendo EAD at this point. Mm-hmm. It's an acquired studio. It's really cool. It's an acquired studio, so they didn't found it, but. It's their studio, so it's their money. There's no separation of, oh, Monolith invested this Nintendo. No, it's all Nintendo, just like with Retro. Retro Studios is a wholly owned Nintendo studio. There's no such thing as a separation of money. There isn't. It's just like Nintendo of America. They own Nintendo of America, obviously. Well, yes, but I- I'm sure they have their different finances and stuff. The weird thing all is all their that finances it's... are reported in the same thing on their financial reports in Japan. The weird thing is that it's not actually completely analogous to the Pokemon company. Yeah, th- that was really interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's um, a weird I, one. I, I, I don't know enough about someone out there is gonna know the history of the Pokemon uh, and what happened. Um how Nintendo got certain exclusivity with it and certain copyrights and trademarks, but don't wholly own everything. Yeah, that's what they I don't, don't get own, they, they don't, don't own the own development it. studio like at all. Um, yeah. And it, it's just a really interesting. The Poke, it's obviously worked out really well for everyone involved. Right. Obviously. Nintendo has probably no regrets per se outside of the fact they probably wish they wholly owned everything so like they can get all the yep. revenue from Pokemon Go. Um, yeah. But whatever. It's not like they regret what happened. And in fact, if that if that did happen, games like Pokemon Go might have never existed in the first place. Right. Um. You know, games like uh the Pokedex or whatever when they released that or. So certain other games they put on phones um, that are, that are good revenue generators, you know, Magikarp Jump even. Um, oh, they might yeah. have never done those. Pokemon <laughs> Duel, which I actually don't like. Um, I think it's actually a really great concept, okay. poorly executed. Um, I liked it enough. Yeah, no, I I like I, I like what it does. It mm. just feels so clunky when you're just using the game. Mm. The act of playing the game is great. That's true. It's that so clunky. Yes. Just use it. It feels like it's just a, this awesome game held back by a like not I'm not even a terrible yeah. UI, just clunky UI. And it's slow, slow too. Some and weird disconnecting and all the slowness. time. Oh, yeah. I don't know. True. So I think they can make Xenoblade Chronicles two at least sell. Maybe it's not going to be like you know this kind of marketing plan is not going to sell millions of copies. But if you can get five hundred thousand more in sales because of it. You know, yeah, you, you, you wholly it. own it. You make basically all the profits of it after retailer cut. Well, why would you not right. 
do that. You got to figure two million dollars of investments would be worth a five hundred thousand dollars worth of sales when you make a majority of the profits. You know, say you make thirty five bucks per sale or forty bucks or whatever the, the breakdown is. Um, but you know, that's not the way they view it. Obviously, uh, Xenoblade does not have the track record of being a top seller. But here's the thing. Here's the weird thing. Metroid does not have the track record of being a top seller. Mm-mm. But they give a marketing budget to that every time. Mm-hmm. So could we at least get the Metroid treatment on this, please? <laughs> oh, please. so you want them to leave it abandoned for many, many years? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, the abandonment joking. wasn't that bad. Just joking. Yeah. Oh, they they basically just skipped one generation hardware. <laughs> and they skipped a generation that Probably everything should have skipped. <laughs> Just getting on the 64. Uh, I mean, yeah, you can talk about the N64, but they were still making it on handhelds then. Right. Um, but like they skipped the Wii U. People got mad yep. about it. It's like, well, other M was just did not do well. Uh, at some point, you have to take a break when you're not I making feel like money. Early on, Nintendo decided we're actually not going to put a whole lot of our games on Wii U. <laughs> it's not doing well. Yeah. I I feel bad. I like I feel bad for Xenoblade 2 because I think what what if it ends up being the best Xenoblade Chronicles game but nobody knows it exists? Yeah. It's a possibility. Yeah, be sad. That that's what I'm worried about. Like I feel like we've outlined a really solid plan to make it work. They're just not gonna do it. We know they're not gonna do it. There, there's a higher chance Nintendo runs ads of Doom and helps pay for that than there is this. <laughs> yeah. And Nintendo doesn't even get a majority of them. They just get a royalty fee from that. So and I understand, like, I'm not saying that's a bad move. They should try to get push to get more third party support, maybe offer some advertising fees for it. But like, this is your game. Right. First party AAA, mm-hmm. your only first party AAA JRPG you have in house. Mm-hmm. It should get a pretty decent push, at least as good as you pushed arms, bare minimum. Mm-hmm. But. Mm-hmm. And again, I, I want to say I feel bad for Monolith Soft for maybe not getting that marketing budget, but at the same time, they're the ones that showed the game the way that they did. Yeah. So maybe after that, Nintendo's like, eh, we know this is going to flop, especially in the West. You uh, Would a demo help, like the um, Octopath demo. Traveler demo? A demo would help. Um, I, think it, I think demo definitely helped Octopath Traveler a ton. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, now obviously we don't know we don't have sales yet the game's not out but um, it definitely started peaking a lot of people like, oh hey yeah this yeah. is really good I'm like it is really good go try it mm-hmm. um, and they could do that with Xenoblade Chronicles 2 Nintendo doesn't have a history of releasing demos um, consistent yeah now obviously That's we're not good. asking them to be consistent we're saying well, you don't know this game's gonna if you give a free demo and don't do it after the game comes out do it before <laughs> like let people Actually. explore you know e- even if it's even if it's the full game, which I don't think they would do, you could put a time limit. Mm-hmm. They're not going to because someone's going to hack it. Mm-hmm. But you know what I mean? Like, even if it's just like the first giant or whatever. Mm-hmm. Right. Or even just a tutorial area or whatever. Like, mm-hmm. whatever. Release that and just put a time limit or whatever you need to do if you want to hold things Like the back. 3DS thing. But, you open but it. it's a JRPG, so you should let people play a significant chunk. I mean, Octopath Travelers does. You can mm-hmm. play like, the entire beginning of the game for two characters Pretty cool. out of the eight. Yeah. Like that, a significant chunk like that that gives you, you know, I don't know, say say four to six hours of gameplay. Um, that's going to help sell your game. You can say, oh, it's going to help not sell it. People aren't going to buy it anyways. Yeah. All it's going to do is make people want more, especially if you could transfer where you end there to the game you buy. So you don't have to replay that six hours again. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, always that's cool. going to be a huge turn on as well. There are some games that do do that with their demos. Well, you also got to go and yeah. not go the way of, at least in our opinion of, of the Pokemon demos, where they were, they were just, just absolutely. I, I, I seriously wonder, Eric, if we we're just outliers because everybody said the demo was awesome, but us. No, I don't know. And I, then again, all those people like Pokemon. Yeah. I, Maybe we just hate Pokemon. Well, I like Pokemon. Well, it's just. But there's yeah. one other approach they've had to demos, which was uh, a quite interesting take. Yeah. Um, 
Super Smash Bros. for 3DS. They only sent out to my Nintendo members and only if you had this email option checked. Oh. I remember somebody gave me a code and then I wanted to play with my friends. So bad. I actually had to buy a code from somebody else. So I spent so 10 bad. bucks on a free demo. I understood <laughs> the idea was word of mouth and driving. Like I, got, I understood what they were doing. It yeah. was just executed so poorly. Well, but it, it generated a lot of buzz. People it did. wanted this it did. demo I wish, so bad. Yeah. No, they did. I, it was the, a good the demo. The problem I had was, with that, what, what, I, what I think they could have did to do it better, and if they do it now, anyone who's a member of my Nintendo just gets the game plus three extra codes for down, for, for the demo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, that's not what they did. They did like this wave thing, and like maybe you'll be selected. Yeah, it was so weird. Like if they would have just did everyone, so then people who have registered their can, and then people, which would be most people mm-hmm. that care. Mm-hmm. But then you'll always have your friends. Like, oh, we never registered Nintendo account. We never made my Nintendo. Well, right. here's a code. Yeah, try it out. Um, like my daughter, she's never going to register. At least not until she's older when right. she gets the switch. So like, here, have a code. Mm-hmm. Play, play this really super complicated game, killing monsters. <laughs> you'll probably beat it faster than I am because that's just the way children are these days. You're right. <laughs> or no, she'll she'll get like, I am frustrated. Can you beat this for me? No, I haven't even gotten to that guy yet. <laughs> Anyways, 